For Democrats in Virginia, the lieutenant governorship has been problematic in many ways. Right now, the second highest office of the state is occupied by Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax. In 2019, Fairfax was accused of sexual assault by two women in relation to two separate incidents in the early 2000s. He denied the claims and was never convicted of anything. Fairfax is now running for governor, believe it or not. Meanwhile, the lieutenant governorship is up for grabs. The Democratic primary is set for June 8th. The candidates are crowding in and it could be anybody's race. One person stepping up to succeed Fairfax could make history as the first Muslim nominated to run statewide in Virginia or anywhere else in the South. That's 39-year-old state delegate Sam Rasool. According to the 2021 Virginia Democratic primary report, he's leading the crowd with just 12% of the vote, while none of the other five candidates tops 2%. But most Democratic voters in Virginia are still undecided. Rasool's candidacy got a huge push, though, from Senator Elizabeth Warren. In her endorsement, she praised him as the progressive voice that Virginians deserve. But what does that mean? Let's find out. State Delegate Sam Rasool joins us now. Uh, welcome to the show. You're currently a state delegate. Why are you running to be the next Lieutenant Governor of Virginia? Yeah, for me, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mahdi, for having me. It's about trying to ensure that we advance progressive ideas all across uh, Virginia. Virginia is a very big state, 10 hours uh, across. And when I have grown up here in the rural Virginia, I realize that there are so many great ideas that need to be advanced. And sometimes we've gotten lost uh, in the rhetoric and forgotten pieces of Virginia. So in my eight years in the legislature, we've put a premium on wanting to engage with people from all walks of life. And that's what we're out to prove. So what are the main issues that your campaign is focusing on? What does it mean to be a progressive candidate in a state like Virginia? What can you actually do? Yeah, we can advance a, a Green New Deal, uh, which shows intersectional justice, where we uplift people economically while looking at the climate crisis with the fierce urgency that it deserves. Uh, what we can do is, is tell people that there is a way to uplift you economically while at the same time uh, wanting to uh, tackle some of these large challenges. What we've been able to do is realize that voting is not a logical decision. It's an emotional decision. And we've got to meet people where they're at. And growing up here in the foothills of Appalachia, it was always about building those broad coalitions, building those relationships. Uh, and I, of course, I can't wait to do that as the next lieutenant governor. And of course, uh, schooling has been a big issue in a state like Virginia, uh, in places like Fairfax County during the whole pandemic. What is your position on the schooling issue in terms of kids at home going back to school, COVID? Yeah, uh, we are ready uh, to open up our schools safely uh, in so many ways. Uh, we have ensured that our teachers are front of the line uh, with regards to what should happen uh, from a vaccination perspective. Keeping people safe is uh, critically important. Uh, and uh, we feel like we've got a great plan here in Virginia uh, as we open up in the next school year and even as we think about uh, summer school and moving forward. You created uh, the People's Platform, I believe, and have chose to uh, have your campaign funded entirely by individual donors. Why was that important to you? And I wonder, could it hurt you in the general election when you're up against a Republican with perhaps deep pockets? Well, we've been fortunate enough uh, to receive a great support uh, by uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren, who really is a standard bearer there. Being able to push back against some of these special interests is what I have done over the past eight years in uh, elected office. Uh, and uh, for me, sending a clear message, we are 100% funded by individuals only. And uh, we need to be able to prove that as the first candidate wanting to be elected statewide in Virginia history, that there is a, in fact a better way to win that is a voice of the people and not of these uh, special interests. And um, you are running for the vacant lieutenant governorship, uh, which will be vacant. The current lieutenant governor, Justin Fairfax, is running for governor to replace Ralph Northam, both Democrats. Ralph Northam had his own scandal, quote unquote, blackface scandal. He refused to resign despite a lot of calls from Democrats in the state to resign. Justin Fairfax 
as I mentioned earlier, accused of sexual assault, which he denies, never been charged or convicted with a crime, but accused by two women of sexual assault allegations. Many Democrats called on him to resign. He refused to resign as well. Were you one of those people who called on either of these men to resign from their positions? And what are we supposed to make of the Democratic Party in Virginia when these two people have been at the top of the ticket for so long? Well, certainly we voiced our opinion about uh, what really needs to happen. Uh, for me, uh, focusing on this race right now, uh, Virginia has a tough, long history uh, that needs to uh, clearly uh, be uh, righted. And for me, I've been campaigning across this state uh, from one end to the other. And there are 133 counties and cities, and I have pledged to visit every one. And I'll tell you what people are really looking for. They are looking to not be forgotten. And that's what I hear over and over again. Uh, while there was a dark moment uh, in our history just a couple years ago, that's really not top of mind for a lot of folks. They are wanting to know how we're going to recover from this pandemic and how we're going to uplift their voices. And fortunately, we've been able to do a lot of that during the course of this campaign. And obviously there's a governor's race going on as well as the lieutenant governor's race. You're running for lieutenant governor. There are plenty of people running for governor. I mentioned Justice Fair, Justin Fairfax, Justin Fairfax. Uh, former uh, Virginia governor Terry McAuliffe uh, is also running again. Have you endorsed a candidate in that race? Is there someone you're going to ally with? No, I think we're all staying in, in our lanes. Uh, clearly, um, I bring up a, a progressive track, but it's one of coalition building, trying to figure out how we can build broad coalitions to advance progressive ideas throughout the Commonwealth. And I clearly see that that is uh, an awesome possibility here in Virginia, and we will continue to be pushing forward and, and building those broad coalitions. Um, if elected, you would be only the second Muslim statewide official in America after Keith Ellison in Minnesota, the first in the South. How much are you leaning into your identity in this race? How important would that first be to you? Well, I can tell you when I first ran for office for U.S. House in 2008, I was knocking on a gentleman's door, young man, and he said, you know what, um, I'm, I'll vote for you, but I'm not voting for Obama. And I said, why? He said, because he's Muslim. And I told him, well, actually, uh, I'm Muslim. And he, he's a good Christian man. Uh, but we, we talked and we found out we weren't so different. And, and over the past uh, several years that I've been in, in office, we found out uh, that uh, us Virginians have a lot in common. And especially being out here in the foothills of Appalachia, there are people who just want to be uplifted. They're ready to look past all of the identity politics and say, who is going to be on the front line of fighting for me and my family. And I've been proud to be able to do that over the past eight years in the legislature and can't wait to do it as the next lieutenant governor. Um, I do enjoy uh, when politicians find such goodness in voters. You're a politician, so you say you found a lot in common with that guy. I hear you say that, and I think that guy sounds pretty racist to me, but that's just me. I'm a journalist. What do I know? One last question. You are also a Palestinian American. What is it like for you to see what's going on in the news right now? We led the show on the violence in East Jerusalem. Yeah, when uh, uh, someone is trying to take away my home, for example, I certainly am going to try to fight that uh, tooth and nail. So I understand and appreciate the frustrations that are there uh, as these violations of international law are happening right before our eyes. As Lieutenant Governor of Virginia, we clearly uh, are not involved in this kind of international policy. But it is important for yes. us to be able to speak up against uh, any of these uh, types of violations as we are for collective justice and, and justice people of the Commonwealth. I know many leaders all across uh, the, the, the country have stood up and said, uh, we have got to uh, ensure that there yeah. is fairness and justice all across the globe. We'll have to leave it there. Virginia State Delegate and candidate for Virginia Lieutenant Governor Sam Rasool, thank you so much for your time tonight. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.